here again, coming to you live from my living room. Wish I could be playing with you guys at the Jazz Showcase, but in due time. Good things come to those who wait, and our time is coming. All right, today I want to talk about learning tunes. Having a vocabulary of songs that you can choose from that most people should know. So, one of the things that, you know, kind of a pet peeve a little bit is when we have jam sessions sometimes and I always like to put together people that have not played together before because there lies the fun in the sense of putting together people who have never met, who have never played together. So hopefully we hear real magic happening and the real reaching across the lines of boundaries of different people, you know, to make a musical message or a wonderful musical statement. But in order for that to happen, we need to have some commonalities. And one of the commonalities we really need to have is the commonality of knowing the same songs. So when I say pet peeve, it's just like, oh, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's a little irritating when it takes us like 10 minutes to figure out a song that everybody knows. So you got to realize that at any given time, it could be four, five, six, maybe seven people on stage at a time. And we have to know the same songs. So, uh, a while back, I participated in a survey by the Herbie Hancock Institute of Jazz, which they asked a number of band directors and jazz educators what they thought were the 50 must-know tunes in jazz. And of course, you can imagine that the list varied. There were a lot of similarities and people thought about the same tunes, but they would list them in different places where I might have thought a song was number seven. Other people might have thought it was 20. Somebody else might have thought it was the 30 most important song. But there was one song that came across as being the most important song to everybody that everybody commented as being a tune that if you were a jazz aficionado or player, that everybody should know. And that tune was Duke Ellington's Take the A Train. Everybody had that on their list as number one. So I figured I'd say, oh, what are 10 tunes that I think are super important for us as practicing musicians to know, to be able to play immediately at any given jam session, particularly at our Jazz Institute Jazz Links Jam Session. So know that you'll go to different jazz session, jam sessions in life, and there'll be different levels of people there. I mean, you may go to a jam session 20 years from now, and of course you don't wanna necessarily be playing the same way as you played 20 years earlier, and you would hope that you know the people that are playing at those sessions are doing some higher level things. But this is a good place to start for me anyway. So my tunes, I said, Take the A-Train was number one. Number two would be a song by great trumpeter Kenny Dorn, made famous on the Joe Henderson record, page one. And that song is Blue Bossa. A nice 16 bar, very repetitive kind of melody. The chord changes are nice and easy to navigate and it gives you the chance to play in a different style. Doesn't necessarily have to be swinging 4-4 all the time. So, more of a Latin feel on this tune. Uh, third, another Duke Ellington composition, Satin Doll. I think Satin Doll is a nice song in the AABA 32 bar format. A good song in the sense that it has a very nice melodic melody that has room for lots of interpretation. So it doesn't have to sound the same way all the time where there are certain songs where the melodies are really finite in the sense that it gets played one particular way but satin doll being a tune that oh not necessarily moving so fast tempo wise but gives you a chance to interpret the melody number four a song by great tenor saxophonist sonny rollins calypso tune 16 bar tune why do i keep saying aaba 12 bar blues 16 bar tune well talking about song forms the four most common forms, in my opinion, are going to be 12-bar blueses, 16-bar tunes, that's a song that's 16 bars long, and that's the entire chorus, or tunes that are 32 bars in length. We have two forms, one called AABA and the other called ABAC. Those letters represent eight measures of the particular melody. So in an AABA, you have to imagine that all of the A's the melodies are all the same. In the B section is where you have some contrast. In A, B, A, C, it's like saying, oh, we have an eight bar melody in A, then the B is like a first ending, then it repeats to the top again for the A for eight bars, and then it has a second ending, which is C. So four common forms, 12 bar blues, 16 bar tunes, 
A-A-B-A and A-B-A-C. So take the A train, it's an A-A-B-A form. Blue Bassa, it's a 16 bar form. Satin Doll is a A-A-B-A form. St. Thomas, 16 bar tune. So important that we know forms too, because when you get up on stage and you're talking to these people that you're meeting for the first time, you want to be able to explain oh, what key a song is in, who's going to play the melody, and it helps to be able to give somebody an idea of what the form is. Back to my list. Number five and six are songs by a great pianist from Hyde Park High School, who we always talk about at the jam sessions when I ask when people play tunes. And we normally play these songs, but everybody doesn't always know them. But number five, Cantaloupe Island, and number six, Watermelon Man. I think they're great tunes with great melodies. Again, easy to navigate chord changes, and they fall in line to very common song forms. Number seven, any blues, <clears throat> excuse me, in the key of concert F or concert B flat. Now we can go all over the place with blues B if we take playing Charlie Parker's Bird Blues with Blues for Alice or other bird tunes like uh, Now's the Time or Billy's Bounce. Or we could talk about playing a riff blues, which we talked about in a previous video, I believe, where we talked about, oh, a riff blues being a four bar phrase that gets repeated three times the same way, equaling 12 bars. So riff blues is like Sunny Moon for Two or Bag's Groove. But knowing a blues in particular in the key of B flat or concert F, I think are very important. Number eight, I've Got Rhythm by George Gershwin, which is kind of the father of that AABA -A -A song form. Again, another tune that the melody is melodious enough that, oh, there's room to interpret it many different ways. And that's another thing about playing jazz music is being able to interpret a melody in a jazz style. But the thing that makes it interesting is what different kinds of ways can a person interpret a melody. So, number nine, a song by a great pianist by the name of Horace Silver. Why this doesn't fall into those four forms. I think it's a great tune just because it's a great melody and again, easily navigatable chord changes. And that is Song for My Father by Horace Silver. I think everybody should know that tune just because I like it and it always makes my top 10 list. Number 10 is a song from the album that we talk about all the time at the jam session being, oh, one of the highest selling jazz recordings of all time, Miles Davis's Kind of Blue. And the song from that album that I think everyone should know is So What? You should know both parts of the melody horn players. Our main, you know, melodic instruments don't just know the doo-dop, doo-dop. You should know the bass line. In the recording, the bass, Paul Chambers plays the melody, and everybody should be able to play that. ba doo 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 ba doo loo dee da ba doo doo ba doo lee da beep up ba doo doo lee doo beep up doo 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 beep up So, very important because maybe the bass player might know the tune but might not know the melody, but hopefully all bass players are gonna know that melody from now on at the sessions. But, horn players, you should know that melody too. While we're at it, Kind of Blue being such a great record, another tune, a blues. The nice thing about this blues is it's not in 4-4, but it's in triple meter, and that's all blues. Another song that's great for, you know, putting your own melodic interpretational stamp on. So, I guess we did 11. 11 tunes, 11 being all blues. So, my list isn't the end all be list of knowing tunes. You know, one thing that you want to do when you're meeting all these people that we talked about before, you know, making sure the hang being important and the hang says, oh, meeting new people and finding out about tunes that you might not find out about from me or artists that you like, you may come to like as jazz musicians that I might not necessarily introduce you to. You know, the more people we know, the more information we can get. So make sure you all are uh, in this day and age using that social media, which is being used to great advantage for folks now in the sense that, oh, there is a real human need to reach out and be in communication with one another. And so I'm glad that when I look online, I see lots of young people reaching out, posting videos of themselves playing, meeting other musicians, checking out people's different recordings, and overall just kind of communicating, you know, versus just coming to the jam session, playing your tune, and then sitting down and not talking to anybody else. You know, again, 
The hang is important too. And the hang becomes even greater when we have things in common. So let's get started making our, hopefully over the summer, we come up with our own top 10 list of tunes that we can make, that we can disperse to other people also. But let's make it a point to try to know the 11 that I talked about. So when I see you all at the next Jazz Links Jam session, everybody's going to know at least 11 tunes because we've checked out Mr. Harris's video. Again, I'm not the end all be all, but I give you what I think and what, you know, I hope works for you and we'll have a great time. I look forward to seeing and hearing you guys in the future. So make sure we're still practicing, shedding as we call it. Make sure we're still reaching out, meeting new people. When you decide that you feel okay going out, you know, if you can check out some concerts or if we can find music and the music will happen again. Make sure we go and not only support the artists, but that gives us a chance to hear people doing the things that you've heard in all these wonderful videos. Thanks to the Jazz Institute of Chicago for letting us talk. Look forward to seeing you guys later. Take it easy.